Over the years, the surgery of presbyopia has become efficient and safe. There are now many methods available. Let's have first a look at what is presbyopia. The human eye can be compared to a camera. The inner layer inside the eye is like the sensitive film and it's called the retina. The optical system consists of one front lens called the cornea and one rear lens called the crystalline lens. This optical system focuses the rays of light onto one single dot onto the retina. The retina sends the visual message to the brain through the optical nerve. For distance vision, light rays are focused directly onto the retina. However, for near vision, the accommodation of the crystalline lens must bring back the focusing on the retina, for instance, for reading. Presbyopia makes this accommodation impossible and we then need to have contact lenses or glasses to be able to read. Current methods to correct presbyopia include intracore, presbyopic LASIK, multifocal lenses, accommodative lenses and adjustable lens. Intracore is a very simple method that uses femtosecond laser to change the shape of the cornea without cutting a flap or ablating tissue. The device cuts a pattern of five concentric rings within the stroma. These rings are placed from 1.8 to 3.6 millimeters of diameter at the center of the cornea. These cuts change the mechanical structure of the cornea and induce a central steepening which affects the diaptic power of the cornea. Uncorrected distance vision is usually well preserved. Intracore can be considered as simple, fast, non-aggressive and there is no complications. However, in some cases, an incomplete cut is responsible for a lack of efficacy. Repeating the laser cut is usually efficient. Presbyopic LASIK is slightly more complex than intracore, but can be applied to many more cases. In fact, presbyopic LASIK can combine the correction of associated myopia, hyperopia, or astigmatism. The procedure starts with the cutting of a flap using the femtosecond laser. The flap is lifted and then the eczema laser reshaped the periphery of the cornea to enhance its central curvature. This steepening corrects presbyopia in the center of the pupil. The presbyopic LASIK has the advantage to correct associated refractive errors such as hyperopia, astigmatism or myopia, to be easily adjustable and to provide a very good intermediate vision. Drawbacks are adverse effects eventually associated to LASIK and the fact that the results depend on the experience of the surgeon. Multifocal lenses are intraocular lenses that are used during the cataract surgery. They replace the natural lens and correct for both distance and near vision. Cataract surgery and clear lens extraction replace the content of the capsular bag of the natural lens by a lens which optical properties allow the correction of both distance and near vision. This surgical approach allows for an almost constant efficacy in the long term. Usually patients benefit from a good near and distance vision and most of the time intermediate vision as well, providing that a trifocal lens or an accommodative lens was used. The accommodative lens is quite different from the multifocal. The mechanical structure of the lens allows for a forward bending during residual accommodation 
an apparent increase of its power. Because there is no sharing of light between distance and near vision, there is no halos and intermediate vision is better. Although very successful in the US, this lens is not very used in France where its clinical efficacy is still debated. The light adjustable lens uses a polymer designed by Professor Grubbs who received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2005. After the lens has been placed in the eye of the patient, its shape and therefore optical power can be changed by exposing the lens to UV light. To correct presbyopia, the center of the lens is exposed to light, which increases its curvature. To correct for distance vision, the center or the periphery of the lens can be exposed as required. Once the desired correction is obtained, the total surface of the lens is exposed to UV light to prevent any further change in its shape. Until the lens is locked, the patients need to wear protective goggles to avoid changes induced by ambient light. To correct presbyopia, the procedure must include a primary correction for distance vision, followed by the modulation of aspheracity to compensate for intermediate vision, or the making of an addition zone centered on the lens. Residual astigmatism after cataract surgery can be corrected at the same time. The balance between distance and near vision can be tuned during the adjustment procedures after the surgery, depending on the pupil size and the requirements for the patients. At the end of the procedure, both distance and near vision are available to the patient. There is no difference in terms of surgery for the adjustable lens and the classical lens. After the surgery, however, UV protecting goggles are required for one month. The adjustable lens is the latest technique for the correction of presbyopia. Its advantages are fine-tuning of distance vision, modulation of aspheracity to compensate for intermediate vision, and mostly the ability to adjust the addition zone for near vision based on the pupil size and the requirements for the patient. Before the adjustments, less than 10% of the patients on the blue curve have a satisfactory near vision. After the adjustments, almost 80% of the patients have good near vision. The identical red and green curve demonstrate that these results are stable with time. 